Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah here from The Automator. And the other day at one of our live Friday calls, someone asked about a installer for version two. And it's kind mm -hmm. of funny because we just happened to see this new script from Lexicos, correct? Yes, so yeah. he does update it. Get it, the URL above me here will take you to the actual install page. Why don't you go ahead and show, demonstrate a little bit about it. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is actually good. The first thing that I want to kind of like touch on is that um, the installation right now, if you go to AutoHotKey and try to download version two from here, it is still going to be um, showing the older version, like uh, beta three, which is not the latest. It seems to me that he hasn't updated this yet. This is as of this particular uh, moment. But now, if you go to the forum, to the AutoHotKey version two section, right? and go to the announcements, you will see the latest announcement and he has a link to download the installer. So right now, the link is here only up well, until the point where he actually goes ahead and- um, The link's over my head that takes you to- the <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, so, so uh, what I mean is like, it is not totally the, the official link yet because he's still working on that. But now things to note, when you download, there's two, different ways how this installs. If you already have AutoHotKey version one installed, it would keep everything as you have it, install AutoHotKey version two, and it would let you switch between one or the other. Well, actually it would automatically launch a script on the correct version, which is great. It is one of the best things that actually came out of this installer. Now. The second way, if you did not have AutoHotKey installed and you download version two, it would download version two, but it will put it in its own folder. Let me show you what I mean by that. So usually when you install AutoHotKey version one, you go to the AutoHotKey folder and you find everything there in the program files, you find everything there. But let's go ahead and install AutoHotKey version two directly. For that, you have to double click on the install.cmd here it would tell you where you want to um, install it. And now it gives you the option to either current user, old users. The portable version is not yet implemented, but I think that will be there soon. You click on install, you go through the process, and this is where it gets awesome. Because now you have a, a, about, the other options are the ones that you usually had, but this one here and this one here are new. The launch settings allow you to auto detect the version and then say what you want to do when one version is detected or not. So if, if it detects the version one, you can either choose a specific version. If I had a version one installed, I could choose a specific version. If I had many of them, like 1.34, 1.33, because I work with different stuff, I could choose one of those. In here, I can just choose like the latest version of it, right? And you can choose whether it's going to be Unicode or ANSI or whatever, or if it will have UI access or not. The same happens with version two. As I just installed uh, 2.0 beta four, I have that. If I had beta three, I would have it here and I could just choose one specific or just choose the latest. The same thing applies. Um, of course, we don't have ANSI in version two, so that's okay. And when the detection fails, if it cannot determine what type of script you have, this is the cool thing, it, allows, it asks you whether to ask the user or select one automatically. I would keep it at ask and that's okay. And I would choose default to UTF-8 even for V1 scripts. Now, this checkbox here is the part that tells you whether you want to do this whole thing or not. Uh, if you don't uh, use the identification, your script will be a little bit faster because it doesn't have to check first. It just goes ahead and executes, but I would keep it like that for now. And the editor settings, now it allows you to go ahead and select a default editor. It's gonna check which editors you have. And it would, well, I'm not sure how many editors it detects, but I would assume that it would detect the most common ones, right? So it would detect Visual Studio, you said, okay, and you just have it so that now when you right click on, an, on a script, and click on edit script, what is gonna happen is that it's gonna launch your editor. Not as it did before that it was just opening Notepad all the time, even if you had another editor. So that's great, that's perfect. But here's the part that I wanted to show you. If we go ahead and open um, 
program files out of hotkey as I didn't have version one installed. Notice that it will install that version in its own folder. And there is a shortcut here for V2 that will point to the latest version. So when you install beta five, a, no, a new folder is gonna be created and the shortcut is gonna to point to that one. This is different to how it was when you installed version one, right? So let me uninstall real quick so that you notice what happens if you already have Auto Hotkey version one installed, which um, is just to sh show how it would happen if you want to update. So Auto Hotkey, let's go ahead and uh, uninstall. Speaking of which, there, there was also an update to Auto Hotkey version one, which we yes, looked yes. at, and, and it's going to be a very specific case that if you run into any issues, right <laughs> we're not gonna make a video on it but you might go check it out right now uh let's go ahead and install version one first and then the new installer so i have version one the latest here um let's go ahead and run anyway because windows is annoyed by this installation uh we're gonna use 32-bit in my case because i have some scripts that need it but anyways you choose whatever you need, say next, default to UTF-8, separate taskbar buttons, hit okay, you're good to go, exit it. Now, when I go to the same folder, notice that this was the, the older way how things were, were installed. You just go to other hotkey, you have old thing. And when you wanted to install version two, just two new, um, uh, executables were added there. Now that I have version one installed, if I go to the downloads and try to install the beta again, it will not modify your installation that way. So you say, yes, go ahead and do the same process. I finished, let me just go ahead and have my editor just in case it didn't do it automatically. Verify everything is good, close, exit. I go to my installation folder now and notice that um, everything else stays as it was. A new folder was created and the link to that folder. So now whenever you want to run out of hotkey version two, um, you would have to specify V2, like out of hotkey V2 and the script or use the launcher, which is already included. Let me demonstrate that launcher real quick. Um, and what does it mean to have a launcher? I have two folders here in which I keep my version one scripts and version two separate. I open my cache calculator here and notice that it has the .hk extension. This is um, a version one script. I double click on it and it would run as it normally would. Now, if I go to version two, I have a script that is, it runs in version two. Notice that I also have the .ahk extension. And previously for us having two versions of Auto Hotkey uh, running, we used a different extension for version two and version one. You no longer need that because of the, of the um, launcher. If I, just to confirm something, notice that this script here up top says that it requires Auto Hotkey version 2.0, right? So if, it didn't, if I didn't have it installed, it shouldn't run. If I double click on it, I will get my GUI. It didn't, it didn't give me any errors. It didn't do anything. The launcher determined that it was for version two and it just selected the executable for me, which is great. Now I can have my, my two scripts um, running with the same um, um, uh, uh, extension here at the end, which is a little bit cleaner. It's a little bit better. Uh, and I love that. <laughs> you know, I, I, I actually like this new invention of Lexicus. <laughs> <laughs> having a launcher there to do it for me. So um, you just wanted to talk a little bit about the requires. Yeah, um, yeah. Let's, you let's, had some questions on that? Clarify. Well, just to yeah. clarify for people. And I have an example over my head of, you know, how uh, how you might use it if you're using version one. And what was interesting, but can you pull up the page on the requires? Yes. Was that. You know, you need to have the word auto hotkey, you were telling me, right? Yes, that is right. Um, in the, you know, V1 or V2, 
However, what I didn't realize, I was trying to get in my head of like, well, how does it know to use V2 over V1? You know, if I have it there, because you can have the plus, like in my example over my head, I have version, you know, 1.130 plus. So anything newer, you know, would be great. But I'm like, well, wait a minute. Why wouldn't it just switch to version two then? And that's where you explained to me. Right. V1 is, think of it as like a compartmentalized thing, right? Like right. declarative, you're using V1 or you're using V2, but it's it's not. Uh, uh, right. So, so that plus sign, it, I think it depends very much where you put it. I'm not really sure if, oh, okay. uh, because for example, if you put it, yeah. Um, let me let me open up a uh, code right here very quickly. So if I say, let me make it a little bit bigger. So if I say version 1.1 1. 1, um, plus, it would get any version that falls into the, this category. That means that 1.0, 1.3, 1.4, all of this, all of those would be considered part of my requirement, but not the two. As soon as I switch to version two, that plus here is just referring to this section from there on. Now, if I put one V1 plus, I would assume that it would take one, two, and three because it is any so any any major version okay. i cannot tell you um if that applies now here's the thing let me let me clarify something we had this point this the this is the current version right this is the the current version of auto hotkey if i put a plus in here it would get oh no sorry 34 <laughs> so it would get any numbers but if this one here changed it would actually not work because this plus just refers to that section here. You see what I mean? Yeah. Um, as soon as this changed to 35, my script is not going to work because it requires 34. Now, if I remove this part and put the plus here, 35, 36, all of them will work. But as soon as this other number changes, then it's not going to work. That's the reason why version two oh. wouldn't work. Right. But we, that probably will never change change to version to, to uh, two there where you have highlighted correct uh well not right there the whole thing actually just switched to version two here my point. because right. yeah exactly yes that's right so that re that number here is never going to change so if you say that any version one is going right. to work it doesn't matter how many changes it does any version one as soon as it switches to version two it's not going to work anymore because this number changed yeah. yeah, so hopefully that clarifies. Like I said, this is... Oh, the other thing, though, is let's talk very briefly about the uh, the thing where it says it peaks inside, and that's where you can turn that off, right? But if you have this requires command, it's going to be very, very fast because it looks exactly for this. It doesn't yes. look for anything else, and it makes a decision off of that. So as long right. as you have this in all of your scripts, you're golden, right? So right, that is right. Um, the, the launcher program is going to try to detect the version on the script and it does so with different steps one the first step and the fastest would be checking at that line if in the script there is this directive it takes that confirms and that's it if it doesn't have that directive then it goes ahead and tries to check the syntax of the script imagine checking the syntax of a thirty thousand plus line script it's going to take a little while <laughs> so well, in that case yeah in that case that doesn't make much sense to um, not use the requires uh, statement, uh, well, directive, because it would make the detection way faster. Yeah, well, um, when I used to work in data science with SPSS, it could discover, try to figure out the, um, the uh, delimiter uh, and other stuff. And mm -hmm. it, was, it, actually the, it would actually just try to detect the types of variables but unfortunately, some of my data files were like, you know, 4 million rows. And so I hated that it would actually try to go through and read the file and it took forever. Now, we, we both know with AutoHotkey for the most part, our scripts aren't even, I think you said 30,000 lines, right? Rarely. No, but that, that, that's a big program and not everybody's using AutoHotkey just for that. They use it 
yeah. mainly to automate stuff like very small stuff. So, no, but so my point is, if you don't have the require saying, it probably still is going to be pretty fast. Yes, of course. Stuff. It's not yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, you you know you will not notice a difference. Yeah, but get in the habit of putting that require thing in there, and then you don't have to worry about it, right? It's just right. it's really fast. There you go. So uh, let us know if you have any questions. Please like the video; it really help it uh, helps out. Thank you.